Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at the 2020 electoral map based off the new approval ratings that just came out in June 2018 of the president in various states. Actually, every single state, obviously, all 50 states, not the District of Columbia, because I don't know why they don't do opinion polling there. They do um, mainly with other pollsters, but they don't with the morning consult, typically, if I'm not mistaken. But we are looking at the electoral map, and obviously D.C. is not going to make that much of an impact um, but when we look at where the president's approval rating is, it's not too high when it comes down to a number of these states. I'm looking at a number of these races and a number of these swing states that are in the Democratic column only because of the fact that the president isn't highly approved there. And it doesn't really make sense because states like Utah are going to be tied between the Democrats and the Republicans, which obviously wasn't wouldn't make sense. Obviously, Donald Trump would probably still win here in a presidential election. But since we're going through the approval ratings, um, it's a little surprising when it comes down to a couple of these states. But we're going to start off and we're going to go ahead and look at the safe states first off, of course, like usual. And then we'll go into the safe states for the Republican Party. Start off on the safe states, of course, for the Democrats, Washington, Oregon, California. The approval rating is not um, too high for the president here, to say the least. But actually, we're not going to go from the West Coast, um, even though these states do a cutoff for a possibility for Trump to actually make a positive implication here for his campaign. We're going to go ahead um, and go through a number of these states, just not in any particular order, just based off the way that I did record them. But uh, California... Washington, Oregon, and I guess Hawaii, since we're starting off on the West, not really though, um, all have more than a 15% approval rating, um, di not negative approval rating of the president. So essentially the disapproval rating is 15% higher or more than the approval rating. So the way that we're going to do this, 15% or more is safe for either political party, um, depending on we're talking about disapproval or approval, likely is 10 to 15%, and then leaning is 0 0.1 to 9.9%, uh, I guess. Um, in terms of approval. So when we're looking at this, we go over to the state of Illinois. Obviously, this is reliably Democratic. That one goes to the Democrats. We go over to Minnesota, which is pretty surprising. The approval, disapproval rating of the president is 15% higher than the approval rating, which isn't too um, surprising. But these new numbers actually were something that wasn't expected, especially in a state like Minnesota, which previously had a pretty high approval rating for the president based off, even though it was a state that Hillary Clinton had won in 2016. That puts the Democrats at 108 electoral votes. We actually go over to the state of Rhode Island. That one has a pretty negative approval rating of the president. We go over to my home state of Maryland, that one as well. Obviously, it's predominantly a Democratic state almost every election season, so we'll characterize that race now. D.C., again, we're not going to go over polling data there, but we can still characterize that one as a Democratic race. We go over to Vermont. That is Bernie Sanders' home state. Obviously, not high approval rating for the president. Vermont and North, sorry, New York share something in common that they both disapprove of the president by the same amount. And that wraps up all of our swing states. Sorry, safe states, not swing states. Safe states for the Democrats. We go over to the safe red states. There aren't too many, not as many on the Democratic side as on the Democratic side, but typical states that you might expect, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, um, I believe Alaska, um, yeah, Alaska, Arkansas, actually, Arkansas is one of them, Alaska, let's see right now, um, yeah, Alaska by 10%, so that one actually would be in the likely column, so not going to the safe column as of right now. But we've covered all Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas. We go over to Tennessee. That one pretty much in the um, – actually, that one has a contested Senate race and possibly governor race. But um, when it comes down to it, we're looking at this, and obviously Trump is still highly approved of here. So that puts us at 40 electoral votes for the president. We go over to Oklahoma. That one obviously goes to the president. I mean, every single county went to Trump back in 2016, another state where every single county went to actually – it may not have been every single county, but still a, the most conservative state in the union by right now based off the margin in 2016. Wyoming and West Virginia, another one of those states that's extremely conservative with every county going to Trump in 2016. So that finishes off our safe red states, and that puts Trump at 55 electoral votes. So clearly the Democrats have the upper hand when it comes down to approval rating polls and when it comes down to the 2020 election and the electoral map in general. Keep in mind, Trump could have won every swing state, but Hillary Clinton could have won the Rust Belt and still won the election, disregarding. I mean, if she won every state that she did and just flipped those three states, Trump could have won Ohio, Indiana, Iowa, Missouri, North Carolina, um, Georgia. Actually, South Carolina was closer than Missouri, which is pretty interesting. Florida, Texas, Arizona. I mean, Utah, all these swing states, uh, even New Hampshire going into his column. Or if you give Clinton New Hampshire, flip Nevada, Trump still would have lost just based off the popularity um, 
the Democratic Party in a number of these states and the fact that this electoral map definitely does help them, uh, which was why it was pretty surprising that the blue wall broke. And we're looking at the likely Democratic states now. So we're going to go ahead and go down and we're going to put likely in our possibility for I guess just clicking through states. We go over to Wisconsin. Trump's disapproval rating is 13% uh, higher than his approval rating. Keep that in mind. Wisconsin, 13%. Remember that when we go through the rest of these states. Delaware is negative 12%. That's how I'm going to refer to it from now on. That's something that I wanted to point out because the fact that Wisconsin somehow disapproves of the president more than the state of Delaware, which voted for Hillary Clinton, I believe, 51 to 41. Um, that might have been Rhode Island, but still, Hillary Clinton won in Delaware, and Hillary Clinton did not carry Wisconsin, yet somehow the president is doing better in Delaware than in a state that he won by 22,000 votes in 2016. New Jersey is the same margin that Wisconsin has, so negative 13% for the president. Connecticut as well, another negative 13% uh, state for against the president. New Hampshire, not too surprising, but keep in mind present the president's approval rating definitely has gone down in this state. Negative 11 approval rating. We go over to Colorado, negative 13%. And here's another surprising one. New Mexico is negative 12%. Not the best for the president, obviously, but still New Mexico was a state that Hillary Clinton won by 8%. And Colorado was a state she won by 2%. And Wisconsin is a state she lost by more, I believe, like one point something percent. But it was still, she lost the state. Yet somehow the approval rating is higher for the president in New Mexico than it is in Wisconsin. Um, that finishes off all of our likely Democratic states for now. We go over to the likely red states. Again, not as many as on the Democratic side, but still some some states you might expect. Can it, sorry, Kentucky is one of those. South Carolina as well. Texas, pretty surprisingly, considering that the president's approval rating has jumped in the state of Texas from being very much disapproving against a president to now um, approving of him by 10%. We go over to South Dakota, approving of him. Um, by 14% or more. Idaho as well, a number one, another one of those states going into the likely column. So that finishes off our likely red column. We're actually going to go over into the leaning red column for right now. This one should be not as surprising, but Missouri, that one goes in the leaning red column. Georgia approves of the president by 5%. Another state that approves of the president by 5%, the state of Florida. So that should be something that's also noted when it comes down to the approval ratings. Um, Florida approves of the president more than the state of North Carolina, which was called for Donald Trump before the state of Florida by some people. I believe it was by CNN and Fox News. But right now, uh, it states that Donald Trump won more in than the state of Florida. He won more in North Carolina than he did in the state of Florida. Yet somehow, Florida voters definitely approve of the president more than the people do in North Carolina, which is pretty interesting. Another state, the state of Indiana, by 7%. The president's approval rating is up over the disapproval rating by 7%. Kansas, only 6%. Frankly, the number of electoral votes that Kansas has. Nebraska, only up by 5%. Another state, the state of North Dakota, only up by 5%. But Montana, up by 8%. So that finishes off our leaning red states. I don't know why Alaska just... Oh, Alaska was included in the likely column um, as well. I mentioned that earlier in the video, which is why I had already checked it off, so I didn't go through it again. But that gives Trump 218 electoral votes. So you know that we've covered all the Republican states. Now we're going through the Democratic states, essentially the states that have a higher disapproval rating than approval rating of the president. Obviously, one of those states is the state of Virginia, but not by the margin you might expect. Democrats are only, sorry, Trump is only disapproved here by 4% higher than his approval rating. Over in Ohio, it's even smaller, down to a 3% margin. But in Iowa, it's the same margin as in Virginia, uh, 4%, leaving, leaving that state in the leaning Democratic column. Michigan is 8% um, higher. That one typically would be in a likely column, but again, we don't have enough colors to characterize 5% to 10%, so I leave this one in the leaning column, but just keep in mind it's 8%. Pennsylvania, another state that puts the Democrats over the top as of right now, negative um, 5%. So I probably should have filled in um, Massachusetts before, but that is obviously a safe Democratic state. But we go up to Maine. Here's an interesting one. The state of Maine only disapproves of the president by 1% more than his approval rating. This is a state that Hillary Clinton had won, but flipped in the second district from Democratic to Republican by double-digit margins, and that's crazy. But also the fact that the state of Maine should be very much against the president, but isn't, and only is by 1%. And these are recent numbers. This is not 2017 or early 2018 numbers. This was a month ago. Keep that in mind. Keep in mind that is the state of where we have some states that were the state of New Hampshire voted for Hillary Clinton by 2,000 votes, and she won in Maine by 2%. Yet somehow Maine approves of the president 10% more than the state of New Hampshire. So keep 
that in mind. Another state, the state of Nevada, that one narrowly goes to the Democrats. And now we have finished off all of our states that have pretty much um, been characterized for the Democratic or Republican parties. I told you there were two states that were even, pretty much a 0% um, or equal approval and disapproval rating, and those are the states of Utah and Arizona. So the way we're going to characterize these is we're going to go ahead and get our independent tool and turn it on, and then we're going to go ahead and characterize these races as independent or just too close to call as I use it in most of my videos. So Utah, not too surprising considering the firm opposition to the president, but also it just looks a little weird that a very conservative state opposes a Republican president. And it's mainly because, again, they opposed him in 2016. A lot of these Republicans drew to Evan McMullen. And then we look at these approval ratings. It's a little bit um, not that surprising considering the state's voting history in 2016. But you take 2012, 2008, or Senate elections or governor elections, and you should really expect the state to be solid Republican, regardless who, of who the Republican is. But it pretty much shows how some anti-Trump states are still there and still opposing the president. And Arizona was another one of those states, like Georgia in 2016, that became a swing state for the first time in pretty much decades. And it goes to show how the president isn't necessarily winning over that conservative Mitt Romney type base, as we see in Nebraska or North Dakota or Montana or Kansas, Missouri, Indiana. The list goes on. And a number of these states where Trump should definitely be approved by a very considerable amount, he isn't being approved by a very considerable amount. I'm not saying that he's going to lose these states in 2020. I'm not saying he's going to lose Kansas or Nebraska or North and South Dakota. But these states definitely could get closer than before. But you should still rely on. Um, on them for a Republican victory in 2020 or possibly even in some midterm elections, Senate, governor elections that come up. Speaking of governor elections, if you go over to my community um, tab on my, I guess, Let's Talk Elections channel, you will see that I've updated or pretty much uploaded a 2018 subscriber decision for the governor election. So if you want to go ahead and get your opinion heard for the governor elections and who you think would win in each state or just go ahead and vote in your own state because you're not required to vote in all, I believe, 35, 36 races. Um, yeah, 36 races in the poll itself. But if you want to, that's fine. But again, please be fair about that. And who you decide wins um, could likely be the winner in my 2018 election night. But there are some close races. States like Florida or even my home state of Maryland got a little bit closer. But right now, um, I can tell you that the incumbent party is losing in the state of Maryland, but that's all I'm going to say for right now when it comes down to results. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.